More refined, more advanced, but still an absolute hooligan, the 10th generation of Mitsubishi's Lancer Evolution moves the game on yet again. Those expecting supercar slaying performance on a cheap budget may need to chat again to their bank managers, but there's no doubting the awesome capabilities that the Evo 10 offers up in return. Now, in many ways, the previous nine generations of Mitsubishi Lancer Evo have just been the warm-up acts for this model. Yes, there have been some great cars, the Evo 6 and the Evo 8 stand out for me, but never quite in the history of this iconic all-wheel drive turbo sports saloon has there been a step change quite as massive as that from Evo 9 to Evo 10. Now, though the end result remains much the same, the hardware has been radically altered, which is just as well since arch-rival Subaru is waiting in the wings to hoover up any disillusioned Evo buyers with their Impreza STI. Now, one recurrent Evo theme is that each successive generation has been bigger, heavier, and more complex than the last. Now, that's continued here, but the end result, though still high-tech, is just as accessible and intoxicating as it ever was. The word that springs to mind at the wheel of an Evo 10, and it's not the word you might expect beforehand, is polish. Though it's still not an Audi in here, uh, all the controls feel that bit better resolved, that bit less uncouth than in previous generation Evos. And the onset of the turbo, well these days it's less of a wrecking ball to the back of the head and more of an F-22 fighter aircraft on afterburner takeoff. Of course it's still monstrously quick. The FQ360 model that I'm driving here is capable of rest to 60 in just 4.1 seconds on the way to an artificially limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. Now I'm not allowed to say on family TV what FQ stands for but if I tell you that the second word is quick then you can probably guess the rest. The Lancer Evo was never a car defined by its straight line sprinting ability though. Instead, it impressed with its astonishing grip and cornering agility, and the Evo 10 is no exception. It gets a, uh, a super all-wheel control system, S-AWC, with an advanced uh, an active center differential, ACD, and an active yaw control, AYC. So, so far, so Evo 9. But what this Evo 10 also adds into the mix is an advanced stability control system, ASC, and uh, that makes all the difference. Now with this riot of acronyms weighing this Mitsubishi down, it would take a special kind of idiot to pump one into the scenery. The ASC system features a middle setting between fully on and fully off, which permits a degree of driftability, but nevertheless intervenes if it thinks you're about to relinquish control of your vehicle. Perhaps the most interesting design feature of this car is a, a technical one. You don't have to opt for the conventional five-speed manual gearbox that I've got here. Believe it or not, a car this expensive doesn't have a, a conventional six-speed manual gearbox. But anyway, what you can have is a, an SST, Sport Shift Transmission, semi-automatic gearbox with six speeds and these clever paddles that sit behind the wheel. It's a sequential twin clutch system that uh, is very similar in concept to Audi's DSG semi-automatic gearbox that uh, pre-selects the, the gears in the gearbox before you actually need them to smooth the changes up and down the transmission. Now most systems of this type can be marshalled through either pushing the gear lever backwards and forwards or operating paddles behind the steering wheel. And the SST system is the same, but uh, its, its real difference is that it's just as impressive when you just leave it in automatic. Truth be told, I think the software is much cleverer than the DSG alternative you'll find in potential rivals like Audi's TTS or S3 models, particularly if you just leave it to do its own thing. It might seem heretical to leave uh, an Evo 10 in automatic, but it's, it's really impressive. It, it blips the throttle on down changes, it holds the gears through the corner, really makes you feel like a world rally champion, even when you're not doing anything. The exterior lines of this Evo are bang on message for its target market. The blackened moor of the front grille and intercooler flanked by these slit-eyed headlamps. And then as you walk round the car, you've got this rising waistline that just uh, signals the aggression of the car. 
Mind you, certain Evo trademarks remain. The three box silhouette, the gently blistered wheel arches and this huge rear wing, they all signal this Mitsubishi's intent. This car's most obvious rival is Subaru's 295 brake horsepower, 25 grand Impreza STI. Mitsubishi, though, offers a much wider choice with its Evo 10 lineup, which starts at around £28,000 and runs up to just shy of the £40,000 mark. Whether you see the asking prices as being strong value will really depend on what you're comparing this car to. Thirty five pounds to £40,000 might be a lot of money, it certainly is, but it won't buy you much if you're looking for another practical four-door saloon capable of taking four people and their luggage to 60 in four seconds. A £50,000 BMW M3 can't even do that. There are basically three Evo 10 models from which to choose with power output suggested by their badge work. The lineup starts with the FQ300 model, uh, progresses through to the FQ330 and tops out with this FQ360 variant. Uh, standard specification includes 18-inch alloy wheels, these bi automatic headlamps which have a clever adaptive front lighting system. You also get um, Recaro seats, Bluetooth compatibility, automatic wipers and remote central locking. There are plusher trim options of course, but in many ways the less gear you put inside your Evo, the more sense it makes. This uh, is a more mature car with some of the rough edges chamfered off, but it's still no smoothie like a, an Audi S5. It is what it is. Now budget big in terms of your running costs for this car. Um, very short service intervals, uh, a prodigious appetite for 98 octane fuel and insurance premiums that read like telephone numbers are all part of the Mitsubishi Evo ownership experience. Now this might come as something of a shock to those who expect supercar slaying performance on the cheap, but the truth is that Evos have always been extremely high maintenance cars. Now depreciation on this 10th generation version will be a good deal better than it was with the Evo 9, which was very much seen as a swan song model, uh, hardly changed from the Evo 8. It's also a decent bet that this Mitsubishi will hold its value better than a comparable Subaru Impreza. Uh, CO2 emissions, well they vary between 246 and 328 grams per kilometre of CO2 depending on the model you choose. And fuel consumption, well you'll struggle to do better than uh, 28 miles to the gallon, even in restrained day-to-day -day motoring, um, such is the, the thirst of the engine. The market for the Mitsubishi Evo is a strange one. Almost exclusively working class male, the Evo is a poster child for a generation who would once have goggled through showroom windows at Ford Sierra Cosworths and before that at Ford Capri 2.8s or Opel Manta 400s. Now the Mitsubishi Evo 10 is a more refined, cleverer car than its predecessors, but it's still going to reward its owner with the adulation of teenage boys and the neurotic awareness of flashing blue lights. By any standards, it's a towering achievement and a devastatingly effective performance car. The problem for Mitsubishi lies in customer loyalty. So many Evo owners, after all, graduate onto Porsches or fast BMWs and never return. Now this 10th generation car gives Mitsubishi its best chance yet of retaining these kinds of customers, a smoother, more usable, better quality everyday product yet still one that makes you feel like you're at the wheel of a rally replica. Nothing else quite replicates the feeling that you get flat out at the wheel of this car. Every enthusiast should drive one at least once in their lives. It's as good as that.